welcome to vindal's concept facebook fans you guys are very amazing taking me from 260 followers to 4300 followers thank you and that is why i'm here with this kind have you been to exam hall and you asked to find the derivative of sine x using the first principle please i'm going to make it simple by the end of this lesson you will learn a whole lot concerning both the limit and the fastest way to do this if you are ready let's get started all right if you are asked to do this now using the first principle so i'm using the first principle let's go i'm going to start with y plus changing y is equal to sine x plus changing x all right so that's the first step after that i'll make change in y the subject formula i'll say change in y is equal to sine x plus change in x minus y all right because i have to carry this subtract my subtract y from both sides of the equation so when i do that i have that change in y is equal to sine x plus change in x minus you know that y is sine x so whenever i see y I'll put sine x. Okay, now that I'm at this point, I have to do very important thing, very important thing, because you know when you get to this point, it doesn't really mean this is not algebra. So the way algebra behaves is not the way trigonometric functions behave. You're not going to say sine times x is sine x, and then plus sine times change x. It doesn't work that way. It means that there is a standard. There are some principles when you have sine theta minus sine let's say alpha when you are saying sine of something a different angle minus another sine of a different angle then it is called for a very serious attention and that is what i want to do right now so look at what i'm going to do let us go to this fact that sine a plus b then is equal to sine a cos b plus sine b cos a all right so this is how what we know it is provable all of this cannot come in one video so but know that even you have sine a plus b is sine a cos b plus sine b cos a then if you also have sine a minus b you're going to have sine a cos b the minus sine b cos a now it's just like you having look at this now you have if you have want to have sine a plus b minus sine a minus b now if you look at this it's just like this saying that sine of a different angle minus sine of another angle so instead of me to do it this way in order not to miss the concept, I decided to come up with, let me assume that A plus B is same thing as A plus change in X. And A minus B is same thing as X. Let me find what this would be. When I say sine A plus B minus sine A minus B, what will it give me? And that will determine the next thing I'm going to do here. So stick with me. Let's keep going. So in this case, this is going to be equal to, it's just like saying the first one minus the second one. Now, if you have sine A cos B minus sine A cos B, anything minus itself is zero, all right? Now, we have sine B cos A minus minus, minus times minus is plus. So, I'm going to have 2 sine B cos A, or it can be 2 cos A sine B. Therefore, that is not enough because what i'm solving for is not in a and b it is in x and changing x therefore i'm going to make this a and b in terms of x and changing x to be able to achieve that i'm going to say that i'm going to say that x plus changing x is equal to a plus b of course remember this is sine of the first thing. Look at this. This and this are the same thing. The minus is minus there. X is this. This is my equation one. 
and I'm going to have that x is equal to a minus b. The reason is that since I have already known what is sine a form of an angle minus another sine of angle, which is equal to 2 cos a sine b or 2 sine b cos a. Therefore, what I'm solving is in x and change x. I have said that before. Therefore, what is x? Let us add these two equations. This is elimination method. Remember, I have done a video on elimination method. So if I add the two of them, what am I going to have? I'm going to have 2x plus changing x because changing x does not have any. This is like 0. So x plus x, 2x. This changing x plus 0 is changing x, which is equal to a plus a is 2a. And a and this plus this is 0 because minus plus b minus b is 0. Therefore, I'm going to say that a is equal to 2x plus changing x all over 2. So in place of a here now, I'm going to remove this a and put this. Therefore, look at what this is going to be. This is going to be 2 cos. Now, I've gotten what is a and that is this. So I'm going to have that 2x plus changing x all over 2. This is for A. Now, let's find what is B. Whatever I get as B, I will put it here. So that means to get B now, I'm going to subtract. Remember, I added. So let me subtract. This minus the x minus x is 0. Now, changing x minus 0 is also changing x, which is equal to A minus A is 0. Now, B minus minus B is going to be 2B. Therefore, b is going to be changing x over 2. Therefore, I'm going to remove this by putting what it is in here. Let me rewrite it here by saying that sine a plus b minus sine a minus b. All right. So in this case, now I'm going to have, because I'm, I'm using this now, to form this, I'm going to have sine, instead of writing b here, because b is already defined as changing x over 2, changing x over 2. And this is equal to changing y. Therefore, I have successfully made um, sine x plus changing x minus sine x to be 2 cos 2x two plus changing x over 2 multiplied by sine changing x over 2. So this is what it is. Therefore, I don't need this anymore because I made this in order to arrive at this point. Of, therefore, I'm going to have that change in y over change in x is going to be equal to 2 cos 2x two plus change in x over 2 sine changing x over 2, all divided by changing x. Because whatever I do to one right, left-hand side of an equation, I have to do it to the right side of the equation. Now that I have arrived at this place, I am going to do something. I'm going to say that, okay, let me say. Now, changing y is the same thing as, changing y over changing x is the same thing as, cos 2x plus changing x over 2 sine changing x over 2 all over changing x over 2. I mean, if you have a over b over c, it's something as a times c over b. Let me show you this because this, let's assume that this c is something as this 2. So everything here is like the A. So if I say A times B, I mean A times C over B, is same thing as saying A over B over C. So removing these two that was here and putting it under this place is not wrong because this is something as saying A divided by B over C, which is something as A times C over B. I have said that. So let's move on. Once this, I have that change in Y over change in X, and limiting function when changing x tends to 0. 
we now say that this is going to be equal to because of this limit look at what happened i'm going to break this i'm going to say cos 2x plus changing x over 2 then times dot i'm using dot sign changing x over 2 over changing x over 2 look at this now there is a a particular standard you need to know look at what that means they say that if you have sine theta over theta and is a limit when theta tends to zero that everything here is going to be one so provided that what you have is a sine of a function or sine of a particular angle divided by that same angle that the limit when that angle tends to zero must be one no matter what it is provided that what this this place is theta and this place is theta and there's a limit it must be one that is the secret therefore everything here is going to be one so i'm going to say that changing y over changing x and a limit when changing x tends to zero is going to be equal to cos 2x plus changing x over 2 because everything here is one one times this is the same thing and remember at this point we are saying that changing x is zero therefore we said that changing y over changing x is going to be equal to cos 2x over 2 which is same thing as cos x because if this change in x is zero we put zero here we now have 2x over 2 therefore 2 we cancel 2 we have x therefore dy dx of a sine function is cos x that is why you see them say over dx is equal to cos x. Thank you.